Hey everyone and welcome back to another GT Online video. Today we're going to go in depth on the new B11 Strike Force and go over everything you need to know about this plane and its uses. Before we get started, I just want to say that this plane is the most unique and complex vehicle that has been added to GT Online in my opinion. It is so much fun to fly and use. But with that being said, let's get into the video. When you buy the B11, it will come stock with all of its weapons on it, that being the hulling missiles, barrage missiles, and the cannon, and you can also equip it with bombs for even more explosive potential. I saw some people saying that it had 100 bombs, it doesn't, it only has 50. The hulling missiles are limited to only 30, and they are the standard bad tracking missiles. People are complaining about this for some reason. The whole time I was flying it yesterday, I never once ran out of missiles, nor did I ever want to use the hulling missiles. The barrage missiles and the cannon are your main source of firepower on the B11. But going over some stats about the hulling missiles, they fire at the usual 60 RPM, 1 per second. The max lock-on range is 300 meters, which is kind of short for a plane. Most planes have lock-on ranges of 400 meters. The max range they will travel before blowing up is 540 meters, which is standard for most vehicle hulling missiles in the game. The barrage will shoot 7 missiles back to back before having to reload, and they travel 400 meters before blowing up. This is equivalent to the hunter's barrage. The explosive MG has a max range of around 205 meters. I feel like the horse has been beaten enough with the cannon talk. The fact is that it's not good at hitting people on foot, but would I call it bad? I mean, if you're comparing it to the extremely overpowered explosive cannon of the Hydra and Laser, then yes, I guess you could consider it bad. But to be completely honest, every gun in the game is bad when compared to the laser beam cannons of the Hydra and Laser. The problem I have with the cannon is that the render distance of the game doesn't give you enough time to aim the gun to hit them before having to pull up out of the strafe. If I could see the person I'm trying to shoot from a long ways away, I'd have no problems getting kills with the cannon. But the fact of the matter is that, at least on console, the person doesn't render in until you are right next to them so you only have a split second to aim and shoot before having to pull up. This might not be a problem on PC because on PC the render distance is better, but on console it is a real problem. The B11 cannon in GTA is meant for vehicles. If you can aim then you should have no problems taking out vehicles on the ground. Barrage missiles are what you should be using against ground targets on foot. The B11 is also the most armored plane that has been added to the game. If you want to completely destroy one of these planes attacking you, it's going to take 2 RPGs, 6 hoeing missiles, 5 explosive rounds, and 4 sticky bombs. When I tried the minigun against it, I shot over 6,000 rounds into the side of the plane and it wasn't even destroyed. Only one engine was completely disabled, but I can still get back in it to fly okay. The B11 looks to have a dynamic hitbox, meaning when you hit one side of the plane, it's going to damage only one engine, and if you hit the other side, it's going to damage the other one. As you can see when I figured that out, I switched sides and started shooting the other one, and now the plane gets destroyed. I'm pretty sure this only applies to bullets though, because with explosions, the blast radius is going to hit both sides anyways. Remember when I said that the B-11 is the most complex vehicle that Rockstar have added to the game? Well, the B-11's top speed changes depending on your altitude. More specifically, it's slower when you're flying close to the ground and faster when you're not. This is probably to make attacking ground targets easier. The top speed when flying close to the ground is only 126.4 miles per hour. If you're wondering where it stacks up against the other jets, to no surprise it's in last place by about 30 miles per hour. And because of how slow the B-11 is, it has issues dodging missiles. Normal missiles from the homing launcher or Savage, you will still be able to dodge no problem circling at lower altitudes. But if an oppressor comes into play, it gets a little harder. The missiles right here are constantly about to touch me and eventually they do hit me. And Deluxo missiles, you don't even have a chance of dodging these. Maybe one or two, but they're going to get to you eventually. At high altitudes where the B-11 is faster, it's a completely different story. Here we have a Deluxo shooting homing missiles at me high in the sky, and the missiles don't even come close to hitting me this time. Definitely something to consider when deciding on what countermeasure to use. Maybe you want to go with chaff so that you don't get caught at lower altitudes. I absolutely love this mechanic. There's an element of strategy where if you see a Deluxo while flying a B-11, you can lure it to chase you up into the air where you know you will have a better chance because of your speed increase. Something that the smarter players will definitely take advantage of. You actually don't have to be that high in the air to get the speed increase either. I want you guys to pay close attention to my plane as I gain and lose altitude. Notice how when I get up to a certain point my camera slowly distances itself away from my plane. That's the point where you gain your speed boost. And then when I lose altitude to a certain point my camera slowly gets closer to me as I slow down again. That's the point where you lose the speed boost.
this camera shift happens somewhere near the first bar on the altimeter, so you don't actually have to be that high to get that extra speed. Now let's run some agility tests on the plane. The most important aspect in a dogfight is the pitch movement, the up and down movement, the vertical movement, whatever you want to call it. The B-11 can do a full loop going at its max speed in 6.52 seconds, which puts it in first place ahead of the Starling which previously had the best loop time. Doing the turnaround test which combines the pitch and yaw strength of the plane, it gets a time of 3.5 seconds, which is okay. The rudders on the B-11 aren't the greatest, so that explains why it kind of suffers here. It ties with the sea breeze and almost gets the time that the laser does. And it makes sense because when I was flying the strike force and dogfighting in it, it really did feel like a more agile laser. For a medium sized plane, it doesn't feel that heavy at all. Most of the cutoff turns you will do while dogfighting in the B-11 will be with a normal up or down turn, just like the Laser and Starling do their cutoff turns. So for dogfighting, the B-11 is essentially a more armored and agile Laser. If a Starling or Pyro ever has to dogfight a B-11, it's going to take a while because of how armored the Strike Force is. And it's not going to be easy for them to outmaneuver you too. The B-11 can seriously compete with the best planes in the game in terms of maneuverability. The only downside the B-11 has in dogfighting is on the initial pass. The B-11 is pretty big and slow so you most likely get hit with some cannon fire that may or may not cripple your plane. That's where the Starling has a huge advantage because it's so small that it's very hard for people to hit on the initial merge. But anyways guys, that is going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP related content. Enjoy the bonus clip of an EO looping tryhard desperately trying to avoid the B-11 barrage but gets caught in the act anyways. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.